one I want to bridge back to a couple of minutes ago. Kathy and, and you were having an interaction about what I might call sort of COVID-19 response for employees and workers and companies. And again, on the WBCSD website, we have a whole project on COVID-19 response. And you can see some really interesting things companies are doing to address worker health, supply chain health, et cetera. And then a lot, I'd say sort of the parting idea is, you know, what, what I'm watching companies within WBCSD's network do are sort of five specific things. And I'm going to make sure I cover them all. I'll make it brief. Focusing on making a difference right now and being tangible. This is not a time to greenwash, whitewash, rainbow wash, whatever color washing you want. It's got to be real. It's got to be now and it's got to be immediate to solve problems. Two, close the trust gap by increasing integrity and dependability. Now is the time to truly build on number one. That is, do what you're going to say and follow through. Appeal to individuals, not the masses. We use words like consumers. These are human beings, each with specific issues, and we have different regional and local issues. Sarah's highlighted a number of them brilliantly. Fourth, it's really a time to partner. Number 17 of the sustainable development goals, they're all important, might be one of the most important. It's around partnerships. And recognize that trust is the sum of many parts. It is gonna take truly a village to solve these big system issues. That sort of information is available again on our website from a report done by Edelman and WBCSD. So Alana, I'd just like, I'd mention it because I know you wanted us to do some closing themes. So back to you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I just, and we just have a couple more minutes. I wonder if um, Kathy and then Sarah and then Walter, if you might um, just offer up your, your final takeaways. Sure, Alana. I, I think um, my final takeaway is, is a call to action. Uh, I think folks need to get involved um, in food policy. Uh, almost every governor has a food policy committee. Um, you, could, you could be on that. Uh, you could uh, see one, you know, the, the mayor in your town um, establishes a food policy committee, but I think it's time that people get involved now that we've seen all of these cracks. Let's do something about it. All right, and Sarah. And I would say, you know, that the tragedy of COVID-19 is obviously the massive human toll, the, the unemployment that has in part led to record numbers of just hungry people in this country. But because hunger is now so mainstream as a result of COVID-19, it creates a lot of policy opportunities. And I think that this is a chance for policymakers to leverage the proven tools that we have that we can bring to bear that will meaningfully address the problem of food insecurity and at the same time help to decrease some of these really large gaps that we have in terms of the haves and the have nots. And Walter? Uh, I would echo those. I think we have acute issues that we need to deal with uh, very urgently here. Uh, and we also at the same time need to look at long-term solutions. And I agree with uh, uh, both uh, Sarah and uh, Kathy that this, this is a time for action, uh, looking at, again, both the long-term as well as the acute emergencies that we have. Uh, there is a pathway to a future that is better for everybody, uh, both from a health standpoint and creating an, a, a, an environment that is sustainable in the long run. And uh, this is an opportunity to really move forward in that, in that direction.